Greetings, brothers and sisters. This morning we come to, or today we come to the end of our devotional series on Jeremiah. It's been a long journey, over two months worth, of uh, looking at Jeremiah five days a week. And I've entitled this last devotion, Jehoiachin ate at the king's table. Zedekiah was 21 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem for 11 years. His mother's name was Hamutal, daughter of Jeremiah. She was from Libna. He did evil in the eyes of the Lord, just as Jehoiakim had done. It was because of the Lord's anger that all this happened to Jerusalem and Judah, and in the end, he thrust them from his presence. Now Zedekiah rebelled against the king of Babylon. So in the ninth year of Zedekiah's reign, on the tenth day of the tenth month, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, marched against Jerusalem with his whole army. They encamped outside the city and built siege works all around it. The city was kept under siege until the eleventh year of King Zedekiah. By the ninth day of the fourth month, the famine in the city had become so severe that there was no food for the people to eat. Then the city wall was broken through and the whole army fled. They left the city at night through the gate between the two walls near the king's garden. Though the Babylonians were surrounding the city, they fled towards the Arabah. But the Babylonian army pursued King Zedekiah and overtook him in the, in the plains of Jericho. All his soldiers were separated from him and scattered and he was captured. He was taken to the king of Babylon at Ribla in the land of Hamath, where he pronounced sentence on him. There at Ribla, the king of Babylon killed the sons of Zedekiah before his eyes. He also killed all the officials of Judah. Then he put out Zedekiah's eyes, bound him with bronze shackles and took him to Babylon, where he put him in prison till the day of his death. On the 10th day of the fifth month in the 19th year of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, Nebuzaradan, commander of the imperial guard who served the king of Babylon, came to Jerusalem. He set fire to the temple of the Lord, the royal palace, and all the houses of Jerusalem. Every important building he burnt down. The whole Babylonian army, under the command of the imperial guard, broke down all the walls around Jerusalem. Nebuzaradan, the commander of the guard, carried into exile some of the poorest people and those who remained in the city, along with the rest of the craftsmen and those who had deserted to the king of Babylon. But Nebuzaradan left behind the rest of the poorest people of the land to work the vineyards and fields. The Babylonians broke up the bronze pillars, the movable stands and the bronze sea that were at the temple of the Lord, and they carried all the bronze to Babylon. They also took away the pots, shovels, wick trimmers, sprinkling bowls, dishes, and all the bronze articles used in the temple service. The commander of the imperial guard took away the basin, censers, sprinkling bowls, pots, lampstands, dishes, and bowls used for drink offerings, all that were made of pure gold or silver. The bronze from the two pillars, the sea, and the 12 bronze bulls under it, and the movable stands which King Solomon had made for the temple of the Lord were more than could be weighed. Each pillar was 18 cubits high and 12 cubits in circumference. Each was four fingers thick and hollow. The bronze capital on the top of one pillar was five cubits high and was decorated with a network and pomegranates of bronze all around. The other pillar with its pomegranates was similar. There were 96 pomegranates on the sides. The total number of the pomegranates above the surrounding network was 100. The commander of the guard took as prisoners Saraiah, the chief priest, Zephaniah, the priest next in rank, and the three doorkeepers. Of those still in the city, he took the office in charge of the fighting men and seven royal advisers. He also took the secretary, who was chief officer in charge of conscripting the people of the land, 60 of whom were found in the city. Nebuzaradan, the commander, took them all and brought them to the king of Babylon at Ribla. There at Ribla in the land of Hamath, the king, had, the king had them executed. So Judah went into captivity away from her land. This is the number of people Nebuchadnezzar carried into exile in the seventh year, 3,000 
123 Jews. In Nebuchadnezzar's 18th year, 832 people from Jerusalem. In his 23rd year, 745 Jews taken into exile by Nebuzaradan, the commander of the Imperial Guard. There were 4,600 people in all. In the 37th year of the exile of Jehoiachin, king of Judah, and in the year Ewell Marduk became the king of Babylon on the 25th day of the 12th month, he released Jehoiachin, king of Judah, and freed him from prison. He spoke kindly to him and gave him a seat of honour higher than those of the other kings who were with him in Babylon. So Jehoiachin put aside his prison clothes and for the rest of his life ate regularly at the king's table. Day by day, the king of Babylon gave Jehoiachin a regular allowance as long as he lived till the day of his death. Brothers and sisters, so ends the book, The Prophecy of Jeremiah. Now, we've traveled through it a long time. And of course, there is a number of lessons here to be learned. In the last chapter, it's spelt out very clearly why God punished the people of Judah. And it was because of their idolatry, because they turned away from him. What we learn there, of course, is that God will bring his righteous judgment. God will always, at the end of the day, judge his people. He will judge the world. Everyone will have to stand and give an account to him on the last day. And we will be punished according to his word. Philip Ryken wrote this. It proves that God says what he means and does what he says. I think we always need to realize that every time we we think about the Bible, God's word will come to pass. At times, of course, we might doubt that. We live in an age where so many people are turning away from God and we think perhaps God won't fulfill his word. But God always fulfills his word because one of his characteristics, his attributes is his justice. God is a just judge. We also have to take note, don't we, even in our own day, that the wages of sin is death. God will punish his people. Jesus speaks about the last days as well. And when we think of Babylon, we think of the last days. Spiritual advantage. The second thing I wanted to mention was that spiritual advantage is no guarantee that one will escape judgment. For the people of Israel, for the people of Judah, they had the temple, they had all the priests, they had the law, they had it all, and yet they still turned away from God. And so we shouldn't think to ourselves, well, I go to church, uh, I have a Bible. Uh, in the end, it's a relationship with God through Jesus Christ, our Lord, that's important. And we have to have that kind of relationship. It isn't about doing this or not doing that. It's about a relationship with God. And the Israelites had every spiritual advantage, and yet they were so far away from God and God punished them. The last thing I wanted to mention was that Jehoiachin eats at the king's table. Well, Zedekiah never did. He died in prison blind. But, Je Je but Jehoiachin, he eats at the king's table. And it's just an amazing story, really. This king who only reigned three months, I think, he gets to eat at the king's table and it's from his line that Jesus Christ came. It's an amazing thing that God, right at the end of Jeremiah, that there's this amazing glimmer of hope that points to the future. What struck me as I read this particular prophecy and this particular chapter is that only 4,600 people were taken into exile we can assume that these were men. So perhaps 20,000 people in all. Now, you have to think to yourself, well, what happened to the rest? Well, there was a few hundred left that ended up fleeing to Egypt. There were others that joined the nations around them. But I dare say to you that most of them died. It's a devastating blow. Judah, which would have had hundreds of thousands of people and perhaps millions of people, was completely destroyed, hardly a person left alive. When you pick up the 
Old Testament book of Ezra, we read how many people returned from the exile. So we have 4,600 going into exile and we have 46,000 people returning from the exile with Ezra. And we know that a number on a number of other occasions more followed. So in Babylon, many of them prospered. They, their families increased. They, they were blessed. And, and I say that because it gives us hope. Not only has, does Jesus Christ come from this particular line of Jehoiachin and the family of Jehoiachin, which includes Zerubbabel, who governed uh, Judea with, with Ezra, but it points to the fact that God can build up his church again. That It might look dead, it might look defeated, but God can build up his church. What a wonderful message that is for us today. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you for taking us through this prophecy of Jeremiah. It's been a long journey going through all these chapters, reading them aloud, thinking about them. And we do pray, Lord, that you'd bless us. We thank you for the privilege of being your people in the world. We pray that our relationship with you would be based on, a, on something personal, a faith, a confidence in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Saviour. We thank you, Lord, that you rule the world, you rule the nations for the sake of your church and that you grow the church and it encompasses the globe to this very day. In Jesus' name, amen.